Okay, so we have um, the water retention function. And the water retention function, as you recall, has our moisture content on the bottom axis and our pressure, which means moisture content. And then we have pressure on the vertical axis. And we remember that we're measuring from zero pressure towards negative infinity, so very large negative pressures. And then we have here zero water content, and our limit here is going to be the saturated water content. So we have some experimental data. That's where we start always, right? So we're going to start with just some data where we did, let's say, a drainage experiment. So we start with the system saturated. We pull the water out. And we pull harder and harder. And so at saturation, it's down here. We have a data point there. And we have data points here. Here we're pulling water out. OK. Now the question is, what can we do with these lovely data? Well, all of our mathematical models that we want to put and describe, put in the soil water characteristics and, 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 uh, and simulate uh, water movement in soils, all of them we want to put in this retention function. And so we need to not put in data, but we have to have to put in a, a function which represents those data. So what we basically want is a smooth curve that fits very nicely that particular data set. OK. So this curve, if we had something which said that H is a function of moisture content. You give me a moisture content, I give you a pressure. Or you could say that moisture content is some function of head. You give me a head, I'll give you moisture content. And that's really all this is. I can go from head to moisture content, or, and that would be G, okay? Or I can go from moisture content to head, and that would be F, okay? So these are just functions, which are really one is the inverse function of the other here that describe this retention of water. And we need that function if we're going to be able to solve these equations in a computer, for example. So um, Mualem looked at the family of functions and understood that, gee, if you have a particular soil which has a particular texture, it will retain water in some sort of relationship to that texture. And it'll also pass water. It'll have conductivity in relationship to that, to, to that texture. So in other words, there's some textural fa factors of the soil that really dictate the characteristics, conductivity and the water retention. So using the expressions of Mualem, Van Genuchten um, simplified and brought them together and said, aha, here we're going to have this thing which we call saturation. So we'll, have, we'll call it the degree of saturation. And what that's going to be given, what that's representing is the, diff the scaled moisture content. So the moisture content minus the residual moisture content. So we have a, a residual moisture content here. So we're saying the degree of saturation will be zero if it's at residual, because theta residual minus theta residual is zero. So our saturation here, S, will equal zero, even though there's a little water in the soil. The, the movable water, the water that's going to be dynamic, is, is no longer there. And then when we get to theta sat, we have theta sat minus theta residual divided by theta sat over theta residual. That's just equal to 1. So here, S is equal to 1. So our degree of saturation moves from 0 to 1. And we can obviously solve for degree of saturation or moisture content. It's just a rescaling of, of, of the way to represent moisture content. And so how, what would be a simple function to represent this? And it turns out this function, where we have a parameter called alpha that scales the pressure, OK? Then we have two, an exp two exponents, uh, n and an m. And by the way, generally speaking, m is about equal to 1 minus 1 over n. So that's a commonly taken assumption. So here, we have m and n are really one parameter, but just two different ways of writing it. So what do we have then? We have our parameters start with theta residual. We have theta sat. 
Then we have alpha, and finally, we have n, which, by the way, we can use to calculate m. So here are the parameters that are required for the water retention function. Now, we said that the, the ability to move water through uh, soil is also related to the same things that drive retention. And so it turns out that you can represent conductivity here as equal to the saturated conductivity, that's when you have the column fully saturated, times the degree of saturation. So when the degree of saturation goes to zero, this becomes zero, the conductivity becomes zero. And then times this expression, which is one minus the quantity, one minus degree of saturation to the one over m power, this all taken to the m power, this all taken squared. And that really comes out of the, what's called the Poisset equation, where you're looking at what is the re relationship between pore size, which um, n is related to, and resistance to flow. Okay, so basically what we have here is only one additional parameter, which is Ksat. All of the rest, theta r, theta s, and the n, all came from our retention experiment. So in order to get the complete description of the retention of water and the hydraulic conductivity, what we need to do is one draining experiment and one column experiment where we measure the hydraulic conductivity, just like Darcy did. And so this is the power of having a soil water retention function that's joined with the conductivity so that we, instead of having to measure the unsaturated conductivity, we only have to measure it saturated, and the rest of the properties about the unsaturated behavior come directly out of the characteristic curve of the soil. So this is why you'll see the Van Genuchten Wallum model used very commonly because it fits the data very well. It has a, a very flexible uh, shape to it, so it can go through the data well. And it also intrinsically combines the behaviors you'd expect with water retention and conductivity. So that's often the most used model in numerical modeling, for example. And so what your task then becomes is to fit these parameters to your particular soil, and then you can do all the simulations you want using these retention and conductivity functions.